Have you ever wanted to gather a group of friends and start a business? Pool money for a joint cause like a vacation? Start a charity? Then you have been thinking about taking collective action. This video is a review of the book, The Logic of Collective Action by Mankor Olson. There are different views about how groups behave. Mankor Olson takes the position that the naive view of groups is wrong. The naive view would be that human beings are collective creatures who essentially play nice with respect to sharing in large groups. There are five components to the theory of collective action. Each one is important to understand. Action is a behavior directed towards producing a collective good. It is not merely joining a group. A collective good is a resource that a member of a group can always consume. That is to say, no member can be excluded from a collective good. Coercion is the forcing of an action or the forcing of a commitment onto a member. Groups basically come in two sizes, small and large. Small groups are kinship size, ranging from the size of a family to the largest amount of people that you could meet face to face. In the newer socioeconomic literature, they call these connections strong ties. Large groups are simply bigger than small groups, and their connections are sometimes called weak ties. A third type of group, called a federation, is really a group of small groups. There are three types of incentives that are important for this theory. They are group, which is based on the collective good, selective, which is basically the individual incentive, and social, which is something like reputation and can be either of the group or selective incentive types. The collective action theory states that the individuals in a group will not act unless, number one, the group is small, or number two, the individual is coerced, or number three, there are individual incentives. It is in the individual's best interest to be a free rider. That is to say, the individual, if they are being rational, will elect to get the benefits of the collective good without paying the cost or engaging in action. Why would we see collective action when the group is small? The theory states that it is probably because of the strong ties between the members. Another reason is the fact that a subgroup that bears all of the cost may not have any choice but to allow for some free riders. Some examples of large groups affected by the theory of collective action are insurance companies with mandatory premiums, labor unions with mandatory dues, rules on the national level such as mandatory taxes, and even professional associations like the Bar Association which have mandatory membership and the set of rules that their members have to abide by. But some say we have a counterexample in open source. The theory may account for open source developers if we allow for social incentives such as reputation as an individual or selective incentive. That is to say that open source developers do receive reputation on the individual level when contributing to open source.